Hey everybody, we are back with Dr. Carol Davis. We're talking about um, some of the books that she's written. We've got holidays coming up and these make wonderful gifts, uh, specifically for therapists and patients and essentially anybody that's interested in the science and some of the work that goes behind the myofascial work we do. Um, I'm holding the fifth edition, although there is a sixth edition now of the patient uh, practitioner interaction. And Carol's holding on to the integrative therapies and rehabilitation. Um, and we're going to spend a little time talking about this book here because it really talks about the science behind uh, myofascial release. There's a lot of uh, talk out there, and there has been in the past, that a, a lot of what we do is woo-woo or, or whatnot, but it's actually quite founded in science. And thanks to, to Carol and some of her colleagues, they've put together this unbelievable book. Um, this is the final edition. I'm going to let Carol talk about it a little bit. And for you people that are looking for a little bit more understanding of the science behind therapy, uh, behind the myofascial release, this is the book for you. This is uh, Integrative Therapies and Rehabilitation. It started out as complementary therapies back in 1995 because that's, uh, that's the level that we understood holistic approach to healing. Um, I was uh, uh, teaching um, holistic therapies. I was teaching myofascial release and people kept saying, well, that's not science-based, but they weren't reading the science and they were really quite critical of any physical therapist that was involved in myofascial release or Tai Chi or yoga, that was Eastern religion. We didn't, that wasn't science. And um, I, I and other people that were doing myofascial release and, and these things were severely criticized. So I thought, I'm going to investigate the science. At, in 1995, the level of, that we understood holistic therapies is that you couldn't separate the mind from the body. We understood that at that level, uh, Candace Pert was developing her Molecules of Emotion book, which really talks about the chemistry of my, the mind-body link. But we already had studies that showed that um, the body responded to thought uh, very directly, and probably in a subtle energy way. That, of course, nobody wanted to talk about that because you can't, nobody's ever seen an electron, nobody's ever seen a photon. What's working inside the body? We threw out the idea of a life force in the 1900s with the Flexner Report. Um, the Flexner Report was a report that came out that said that physicians were practicing witchcraft, and in order for a medical school to have viability, they should follow the Johns Hopkins model. And the Johns Hopkins model introduced the randomized control trial as the way of introducing, getting rid of bias and in improving validity and reliability so that you could say that what you were doing was making the difference. It wasn't a placebo or it wasn't it wasn't um, something just um, uh, um, that we couldn't understand. Unfortunately, the randomized trial does not work well at all with humans because it requires that you keep conditions stable and you, that everybody's going to be the same at all times and that you, everything that you do is exactly what the other person did for liability, that it, for validity, that the same thing is done every day and then you pre-test pre and post-test and see if there's a change. Well, there's going to be a change, no matter what. And, and of course, they weren't taking into account the whole field of quantum physics, the whole field of subtle energy, which basically says you change something simply by looking at it. You can't, you, the, the whole uh, anatomical configuration and energy uh, of, of, a, of whatever you're looking at changes with your interaction with it at a subatomic level. So um, the <laughs> science chapter at that time in the introduction was psychoneuroimmunology, the science of mind-body medicine. And then I asked uh, my colleagues who were using uh, uh, holistic therapies in their practices and physical therapy to write chapters. And the contributing authors were some of the best names in physical therapy. I have section one, which is the science that, that supports integrative therapies. Then body work, I have uh, myofascial release, John Barnes, massage, craniosacral therapy, um, uh, Debbie Giaquinta Wall, who was one of my graduates, uh, uh, um, manual lymph drainage for Barbara Funk, and Judy Deutsch did the, the rolfing, um, uh, um, structural integration. Then mind body is Tai Chi, biofeedback, both by Jennifer Bottomley, yoga, Matt Taylor, Feldenkrais, Jim Stevens, and Pilates, Brett Anderson, all physical therapists who are using these and, and have written chapters and peer reviewed articles on this. And then energy work, something that's more oriented toward flow of energy, less toward manual, although it's really hard to separate these. And in here I have Reiki, 
um, Qigong um, by Jennifer Bottomley, Acupuncture, and Mary Lou Galantino from New Jersey contributed to this. Uh, dry Needling, Jan Dommerholt, um, probably the foremost physical therapist involved in the science of dry needling from Maryland. And then Therapeutic Touch, Ellen Anderson um, uh, from New Jersey. These are our colleagues that are using therapeutic uh, interventions that would be, we would call a holistic. And looking at the whole, the, the mind-body interface and the energetic link. As science developed, and as the second edition came out, and then the third edition came out, and now the fourth edition, we actually had to rename integrative because instead of being complementary to, it's right. integrated in with the traditional physical therapy. We have different science chapters. The first was psychoneuroimmunology. Then we I started looking at electron, quantum systems, quantum physics and systems theory, which is really the foundational understanding of the biotensegrity um, model in our bodies, the flow of subtle energy in a system that is ordered, and it's ordered in part by the phenomenon of connective tissue that we call fascia. And then um, the next edition had um, advances in the science of, of vibration, photons, and the zero point field, where um, we looked at, we started looking at the Russian studies on the Akashic field on the energy field that's out there that's full of potential energy that if we could tap into it, we wouldn't need any fossil fuels at all. Um, and um, we had some really very interesting books being written and a lot more science being done on photons and the role photons play, light plays. And there's a prevailing um, theory, not proven, that the tubules of the fascia are hollow tubules that are actually allowing the flow of photons, little light particles that are bringing energy in for information in the form of energy to the cells. We know that cytokines are energetic protein molecules in the fascia that are flowing at, at the speed of subtle energy to, for example, a wound site. The cytokine says, bring in the anti-inflammatories, bring in the fibrinogen, bring in whatever has to happen for the wound to heal itself. The cells are talking to each other. That's not done by cable nerves. That's done by fluid nerves and little um, uh, 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 subatomic um, microscopic uh, molecules, protein molecules called interleukins. And the body's talking to itself all the time uh, in this push-pull of the biotensegrity matrix. That was the third edition. Now, the fourth edition, I began to see this extracellular matrix, this fascia, is really the tissue that is the the communication system for the whole thing. If fascia is restricted and if, fa if fascia is damaged, that communication, all the communication system of the electrons and the photons and the cytokines and the, and the glucose and the proteins and the amino acids and everything and all the, all the biochemistry is interrupted. And when it's interrupted, we go into imbalance. The immune system goes into hyperdrive. The endocrine system can't work. The GI system can't work. You start to get stomach upsets, you get headaches. And then you get musculoskeletal problems and patients come to us in this tremendous imbalance. At the root of it all is the transportation system that keeps everything in balance and that's the extracellular matrix, the fascia. And so I did a, the latest scientific discoveries about fascia, about biotensegrity. And, and I say that forecast the importance of this tissue to health and healing. That was in 2016, 2017. I've had two wonderful forewords, one by James Oshman, the, uh, the author of the best science book. If you were looking for a book that explains the science of energy medicine, James Oshman, Energy Medicine, The Scientific Basis. And James um, uh, gave me great um, uh, credit by writing the foreword to the third edition. And the fourth edition was written by my colleague, Carolee Winstein. Carolee Winstein is the head of the, uh, the um, uh, biokinetics lab at USC. She's a physical therapist with a PhD, and she's a fellow, a uh, Worthingham fellow. She's a good friend, and she understands quantum theory in a way that only someone married to a Nobel Prize winner in physics could understand it. <laughs> Carolee's husband, Kip Thorne, won the Nobel Prize in 2018 for his discovery of capturing the gravitational waves as they came in. Millions
millions of light years away. And he put together the, the, uh, the capturing of that. So that's this book. And so if you, if you want a, a reference book on the science behind integrative therapies, this is a book that might be a, an excellent choice. And you get it through um, John Barnes' website, uh, www.myofficialrelease.com. You can get it on uh, the Slack books. They're, they're my publisher. And you can get it um, on Amazon. But make sure you get the blue one, because the blue one is the latest edition. Well, thank you very much for talking about this. I think that we can, you know, science is catching up. Yeah. You know, that's the important. They'll thing. criticize things that they don't know, and don't yeah. understand, mm -hmm. and now that science is catching up, they're recognizing that more and more people are coming into the fold. More yeah. and more people are coming into the fold. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Craig. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, tune in to IPT Miami. Check us out on our YouTube page where these videos will be posted, and we'll see you again real soon. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thank you for plugging my books. Oh, we're going to plug books. I'm going to push that there. I'll have to cut that off.